right, I got Delta, got set. We're on Bullhead Ground. I got Bullhead Towers, my next frequency. I'm going to go ahead and give them a ring. Afternoon, Bullhead Ground, Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu. November 23, Mike Zulu, Bullhead Ground. 23, Mike Zulu, information Delta at signature VFR Northeast, please. November 23, Mike Zulu, runway 34, taxi via Alpha 4, Alpha, Alpha Niner. All right, 34 via Alpha 4, Alpha, Alpha Niner, 23, Mike Zulu, thank you. All right, there's Alpha 3, so Alpha 4 is down this way here. I see Alpha 4, Alpha 4, Alpha, Alpha Niner to 34. Got it. And it is hot in the desert. Everyone always asks why I taxi with my door open. Well, you live in Arizona, where we are now, or you live in Florida, where we're heading, where we live. You know why we taxi with the door open. All right. Alpha 4, I'm coming out Alpha 4 here. Runway 34, that's going to be a left-hand turn. Looks clear. All the way on down to Alpha Niner is what he asked for. And I'm going to depart out of here VFR. I'm going to monitor all the frequencies you need. I'll pick up flight fall along the way, but we're going to go like the route I was showing you up to PGS through the special flight rules area and then down to Sedona is the game plan. We'll see what weather allows for. Density altitude is 3,300 feet right here. We're great on weight and balance, but we'll see how that still that plays into our favor. What happens with that? All that said, I'm lean for this taxi here. We're only at 800 feet of elevation, so I'll do a slightly less than rich takeoff. We'll see if it needs it performance-wise first. Alpha 5 is what I'm passing now. A little bit more of a taxi ahead of me. But all looks good. Bullhead ground, Archer 55167 five, signature uh, with information Delta, VFR departure to the north. Five five one six seven bullet ground runway three four taxi via Alpha four Alpha Alpha Niner Alpha four Alpha Alpha Niner to uh, three four to one six seven Alpha six what I'm passing now long long taxi they get some uh, air traffic airline traffic in here I was landing in here we passed uh, Sun Country it was coming out landed just before they took off neat little uh, casino town it seems like Bullhead City. See Alpha 7. Looks like it's going to be a 0, 5, 0 out of here, so out to the northeast, like we said. And again, I've got all that tuned up. Just going to the VOR first, then we'll kind of make our way through the special flight rules area, monitoring that, seeing where, where's best for winds and traffic, and then I'll queue up Sedona after we see the Grand Canyon. And we'll head in that way. This will probably be one of the longest videos I've ever uploaded to the uh, M0A YouTube and Facebook for sure. So hopefully you enjoy it as a long form video. Normally it's quick, show you how to do better steep turns, show you how to do better landings. But we get to do a lot of fun stuff as well. And I want to be able to share and showcase some of that with you all. Pass an Alpha 8, almost there. And all the way 
down to Alpha 9. I'll tuck myself in here, turn into the wind, knock out the run-up. We'll be on our way. There's some cooler air loft, too. All right, I'm sneaking this corner over here because there is that archer coming. He'll have to do a run-up as well, though. They were a good little ways ahead of him, but still, just in case, he's taxiing faster than we were. I'll tuck myself in this corner, turn as much into the wind as I can without being a burden to the whole taxiway. That archer's way, way back there, so we're fine. All right, and let's go ahead. Flight controls, right side up, left side down, left side up, right side down. Full back, full forward. Rudder pedals, whew, that wind is gusty. Rudder pedals, all good there. Mixture's going just about rich. I'll we'll monitor that on the EI here, up to 1700. Great. Back check. Left side, great drop. Back to both. Right side, even better drop. Back to both, carburetor heat. Dropping RPMs, increasing carb temp, fantastic. Good, good, good. Cabin airs open, engine gauges confirm green, green. Full fuel, totalizers reset, autopilot altitude set, correct altimeter set and in there, flip flopping over the tower, smoothly bringing it back to idle here. And we're set. Red Dog 3 1, Bullet Tower. Bullet Tower, Red Dog 3 1, flight 2H1, currently in signature line. Uh, request present position, take off, departure to the northeast. Red Dog 2 1, depart from the ramp, get your own ramp, proceed on course, wind 320 at 12. Red Dog 3 1, thanks. And Bullhead Tower, Skyhawk 2-3, Mike Zulu, Alpha 9-3-4, ready for departure. Blue Armor 2-3, Mike Zulu, Bullhead Tower, runway 3-4, clear for takeoff. 3-4, clear for takeoff, thank you, 2-3, Mike Zulu. Get my door closed, everything's set, good, good, good. This, of all times, you hear me say this in Florida all the time, but it'll be ever so true, the more into the mountains we get here, using every little bit of runway. You're going to feel, we'll feel that 3,000, now 400 feet of density altitude as it's warmed up a degree. Confirm, I see 3-4 outside, 3-4 on my compass. Looking good, heels hit the floor, toes to the bottom of the pedal, smoothly applying full power. I am getting maximum RPM, so I'm happy with that. Airspeed is live. Engine gauges are green, green, green. Feels like she wants to fly. A thousand feet of runway gone, and she's flying. That makes me feel a little bit better for that departure out of Sedona if I can get her flying in a thousand feet when it's with full fuel. When it's 3,400 feet density altitude, that makes me feel pretty good, pretty confident in the Sedona performance on the way out. All is looking great. A little bit higher here, and I'll make that right turn on out. Get to some cooler air, because we are cooking. Or VFR out to the uh, northeast, like a 050 heading. Number 3 Mike Zulu, Roger, on course. On course, thanks for your help today, 2 Mike Zulu. Well, he was nice. All right, proceeding on course and climbing on out. Still hand flying it, but I will kick the autopilot on here in just a bit. I want to make sure I'm going to clear these mountains. I'm going to use this little mountain here to I'm gonna catch a little bit of ridge lift off of it as well. It looks great for that. Based on how the winds are coming too, that shouldn't be a problem. That sets me up really oh, nicely uh, for some ridge lift. Flight on course, zero, four, zero, one thousand below, clear the north. Red Dog 3-1, I have a good flight. I don't have them on ADSB, but I got them outside. So, again, all the more reason. you got to be looking outside. Catching a little downdraft. Followed by a little updraft. We're doing good. I've got a little break in the valley if I need to. I know how I can get back out if I'm not going to clear this little range here. Blue tower, finish deck out. It's There's more downdraft.
I know my way out will be a nice turn into the wind. I know where the wind is coming from. I know how the wind's pushing me. I'll make a, I'll make a big, if I feel like I'm not going to clear this range here, I can turn early while I'm in this valley. Make a nice left turn right on into that. Let's see if I can catch a nice little updraft real quick. If not, I'm going to exercise that option to make that turn. Something about a normally aspirated airplane, or a naturally aspirated airplane. You wish you had that turbocharger when you live out here. Yeah, so I'm not feeling 100% about this. Are we going to clear it? Probably. But if I catch a downdraft, I am not liking the looks of this. So watch what we're going to do here. We'll head tower, 2-3 Mike Zulu is going to left 360 for a climb. 2-3 Mike Zulu, your discretion. Thank you. Notice the verbiage there, too. I said, no, this is what we're going to do. And he, of course, very kindly said back, listen, it's your discretion. Look, turn it into the wind, 1,000 feet per minute, 1,100 feet per minute, 1,200, 1,300, 1,400 feet per minute in that climb. Now, I have to be very mindful that I'm going to have a tailwind again in a second. So I need to watch for that. But this just shot me up well above that ridge now. So I'm feeling even better. That's the Colorado River, 12 o'clock, by the way, right out there. That's what we're going to be. Uh, that continues out uh, into, towards Vegas, the Lake Mead, that breaks off into the Grand Canyon. We're going to skip a little bit of that and just head straight to the Grand Canyon. So in this climbing left turn, I'm still, geez, I'm turning towards the tailwind right now, so 900 feet per minute. Nine, five, one, six, seven, we'll see what happens here. 1,000 feet per minute. To the north. Climbing real nice. Notice how that turn started into the wind. It was kind of not quite like a Shandell. I got, I got a little slower. Not, not quite a Shandell, but somewhere in that ballpark. That wasn't the intention, but that it could be one great purpose for a Shandell as well, a maximum performance climb. I wasn't quite looking for maximum performance. I was just looking for a little buffer to make me feel better, you know? There's a little more clearance over this ridge line, and now looking at that ridge line, I feel a whole lot better about that ridge line there. The highest peak is at 5,200 feet. We're going to be passing, that's that guy over there. We're going to be passing well uh, clear of that through the little valley where I want to go through. Union Pass, is it called? I'm sorry, that peak's 4,800 feet. I'm already passing through 3,200 feet now, and there's a great little road right through here that I'm going to follow 12 o'clock as well. I see on the sectional chart that goes through that Union Pass, so I'm going to follow that, and I'm well above that pass here now, especially with that peak being 4,200 feet. We're looking really good. I, I want to clear this seriously by about 2,000 feet, though, and I'll be there at a normal now 500 feet per minute. Would we have cleared it the first time? Probably. But that's just not a theory I want to test. So I'd rather, I got plenty of fuel. This is why I plan shorter fuel stops. Maybe, I mean, I'll never fly more than three hours. This leg alone is going to be just shy of two hours with this circle. Okay, it adds a little bit, but I know I hold four and a half hours of fuel roughly, assuming I'm leaned out properly and everything else. So I know I'm, I'm sitting good and I can afford to make those types of decisions based on the amount of fuel that we have here. So we're going to pass through Union Pass, follow that road on out. Once we get through that pass, we'll kind of continue our path on up to that uh, PGS VOR is where we're heading next. So obviously we'll cut this flight up a little bit. It's going to be an entire two-hour flight. We'll cut it up a, a little bit for you to see and enjoy, but the main focus will be seeing that Grand Canyon. Well clear of the pass. Remember where the wind is coming from as well. It's coming from the left, so I'm expecting some turbulence off this ridge line here as well. Through the pass. So I'm just being mindful that is another reason I want to be that much more clear of it. I hear ya. Nice little updraft here. Gonna just ride it as much as I can. This is kind of, we're coming up to some of that ridge lift that I was telling you about. It's a tiny ridge, but we'll still get some. I think we're catching some off of it now. And I'm going to bug us all the way up. The 9,500. That way we're clear of that first little bit of the special flight rules area for the Grand Canyon as well. Here comes some of that ridge lift, 11, 1,200, 1,300 feet per minute. Up, up, up. Riding that nice ridge lift. 
I'm at 4,400 feet now. Above those obstacles, but not going to be above the turbulence they're going to bring. So you want to be mindful of that. I have uh, AGL altitude from GPS. It's showing about two, th I am exactly 2,000 feet AGL right now, which is about the minimum you want to be going through something like this as well in the event you catch that little bit of a downdraft. We've really lucked out, haven't had too much. There's a good little bump there. But we're looking really good. I like pa going through a pass too that has a highway as well. Just, it's another Three option. Pull up. Just Three another ahead. option. Pull up. The Avidine shows me aiming right towards that, so that's why it's freaking out. But we're looking good here. I think I have the Avidine on a thousand foot uh, buffer as well, so that's why it doesn't like that. But what I was saying is I like going through with a road there. If I have an engine failure or something, you can see this is some rugged, rough terrain out here. So a road is your not a, usually not a fantastic option, but it is the only option out here. I'm still hand flying it. I haven't kicked on the autopilot just because of these updrafts and downdrafts for whatever reason. Maybe it's just all in my head. I would rather be hand flying it right now. All right. First mountain pass, get bumped around. The next one's even bigger. We're clear of all that. Climbing on up, catching some more lift off those mountains, 1,000 feet per minute, just riding that wave that I can. It hasn't reciprocated in a downdraft just yet, but uh, I can hear the change of the pitch of the propeller. It felt like it was going to for a second. That's mountain flying, and anyone who's done a lot of mountain flying, again, I'm a Florida-based flyer, so I don't, I don't profess to be a mountain flying expert woo, by any means, but they'll tell you, mountain flying experts will really tell you, you can listen to the pitch of the propeller, how the wind's hitting the propeller. Caught a little downdraft there for just a second. And we bay on the way out here a little bit. Gonna keep it on climbing here. I have an airport out to my right if I need to. Also have this road and we've got still rugged terrain, but at least flat terrain here for a little bit. Makes life a little bit nicer. Do I'm gonna go queue up our course back direct. I'm gonna use the autopilot during this little clearing here. Take a little bit of workload off. Autopilot coming off. Put a GPS mode, altitude up to 9,500 feet. Now let's do that at just 500 feet per minute. It's hot out here. Let's make it real nice and easy. Let's see how she does holding that here without getting us too slow. A little bit slower than a VY climb. I'm not crazy about that. Let's try it 400 feet per minute. See if we can nurse her with her. Density altitude is now 7,600 feet. It is starting to cool off. OAT is showing about 71 on the Dynon right now. 59 on the EI. They're two separate probes, though. Cabin air is open. We'll get as much air in here as possible. Start scoping out the next ridge while I have some free time here. Let's see, next ridge is showing passes. That's almost 7,000 feet, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue watching this autopilot. 
flying really well. Seventy nine hundred feet of an airport that way. It's a little bit lower to the right. I can see that as well. That does give me a tailwind if I venture that way, though, so I need to be smart about always knowing and having my way out, knowing where that way out really is as well. Just continuing to be smart about the whole process. Happy with my climb. Not as thrilled about my ground speed, but that's just a, a fact sometimes. Catching a little downdraft, not much we can do about that. That's just kind of par for the course today. Not much we can do. Try to spot my backup airport, which will be out here to my right. I have it in sight out that way, just as a backup. If things hit the fan, I know I can go there, just about 15 miles out to the east that way. East, southeast. Gotta fight some strong winds. I'm showing about a 34 knot crosswind. Winds up here 324 at 40 right now, says the Dynon. And I don't know if the cameras are doing it justice, but we're getting bumped around pretty good, so. Pretty good. Once we get to PGS, I'll do my best to leave the autopilot on. Go heading bug mode, just kind of around to a few points. I'll show you on this iPad here. A few points I made around the special flight rules area. So this uh, flight free zone uh, is no flights below 8,000 feet, as you can see. So we're going to do that at uh, 9 5. That's that PGS VOR, Peach Springs, it's called, that we're heading towards. I'm going to kind of proceed almost due north, really going to buck some winds there, unfortunately. So we'll see how long we take that until we continue across. I'd be careful because some of this flight-free zone, which continues down, this is no flights below 14.5. There's no chance this airplane, I don't have, no chance this airplane can touch that. So that's exceeding some service ceilings there. All right, but no, we'll continue across some of this, get some good views off the left side kind of all the way down across. We may or may not make it this far. I may actually pull this point, maybe more so back to like here, over this part of the canyon, route to there, and follow that canyon down. Kind of give me a cool, uh, Message. cool little way out, um, all the way on in. I got it, it's all good. All right. Tower 294, November Bullet Tower, runway 34, right. clip tag off, fighter rush. I'm going to go ahead and get Los Angeles yeah, Center. That's who's out here. Three, four, nine, four, nine, Just nine, queued up. Uh, they're just no, they're four, not going to pick us up. They, they dropped us a long, long time ago, but I just want to listen. We're not going to be able to get flight following this low out here. I just want to be listening. I'll call them, though, once I get a little closer to, to Peach Springs and see what they say, though. Not going to hurt. But we have to be careful. I want to follow and get flight following. But I also have to realize that the voice is not talking here. Each corridor has its own frequencies. See that there? Each corridor has its own frequencies. We'll monitor probably two frequencies Whew. once we get uh, over there. Good little climb. Well clear of these mountains here. And we've still got quite a little ways to them, which will help. That climb, we're at 6,800, 900 feet per minute right now, but that helped the old ground speed. Ground speed's getting better up here, actually. Wind's starting to shift. It was pretty. This airplane's at miles per hour, so we're showing about 113 miles per hour, indicating 105 in this climb through 7,000 feet right now. Again, the mountains are a little bit higher to my left, so to the north, northwest. The winds are coming from the Richard north, northwest. Cream. So I want to be mindful that there's going to be cream. some right, sorry, that eddies coming off through here. Look 
looking good. And right now we're about 26. Well, this is so tough with the ground speed. We're going 113, now we're going 90. It just, this wind keeps shifting so much. So we're around high 20s, 27, 25 minutes maybe until we get to that VOR. And again, this will be, we'll splice this video down just so it's not a whole two hour long video. But it'll still be something fun. November 5, Delta Mike, contact LA Center, 128.45. 2845 for 5 Delta Mike, thanks for LTM. And there's 5 Delta Mike, I'm sorry, my mistake, LA Center on 128.15, 2815. Okay, 12815, 5 Delta Mike, thanks. Centurion 28 Fox, draw the Needles altimeter 299 or 2. 299 or 2, the 28 Fox. Or 28 Fox, I just want to verify. I'm showing you uh, over at Needles, and then you're making the southbound turn to Imperial, is that correct? I'm sorry, sir, we missed that. I never 28 Fox, I just want to verify your uh, destination and routing. I'm showing you a destination to Imperial County, and uh, you're going via Needles, and then you're going to make a southbound turn toward Imperial. Negative, we're going to uh, Laughlin, and so we're going to turn north towards once we hit Needles. Uh, that makes more sense. I thought there was uh, something a little odd about that uh, for your direction of flight. Okay, Foxtrot, I'll show you destination Laughlin Bullet Airport, Kilo India Foxtrot, Papa. Laughlin Bullet altimeter, 29090, zero information, echo uh, is current at this time, active runway 34. Uh, echo is current, and we were having a hard time getting that. Um, so we'll, we'll contact it again when we get closer. Our choice, Foxshot, uh, Roger, not a problem. Uh, the uh, Laughlin Bullhead automated weather uh, from 1856 Zulu. Winds were calm, visibility 10, sky conditions are clear below 12,000, and temperature 30, two point minus six. 28 Fox, thank you very much. We're going to start getting rocked around now as we catch this next little pass here over these mountains. We're well clear of these. We're passing through 7,800 now. Their highest peak is 6,900. I just got my switch tanks Executive alert jet, 219 on the Avidine, although we don't, we don't really switch tanks. I do it as kind of a dummy check, so double check, fuel flow, oil pressure's green, green. I can lean us out just a little bit here in a second. Great fuel wise, batteries charging. Good, good, good. Just to kind of check everything. And visibility 20 statute miles, and the uh, sky condition is still clear below 12,000. Temperature 352 point minus 8. Uh, could I have the altimeter setting again, too, sir? 32 Fox, got the Laughlin Bullhead altimeter 29090. 29090, thank you, sir. LA Center, Skyline 69 for November. Got a little downdraft through here, no big deal. Sky Lane, uh, go ahead with your uh, numbers again, please. 6294 November. Skylane 6294 November, Delhi Center. Are you looking for uh, VFR flight following services, sir? Yes, sir. Skylane 6294 November, Squawk 2401, IDENT, please. 2401, IDENT. I'm going to see November. if we can pick up uh, flight following here. They dropped us uh, way before Bullhead City, so we'll see. I mean, I could hear him pretty clear. Where Center, am I at? I am... Fox truck has request. Centurion 28 Foxtrot, go ahead. Are we going to start to Ten miles northwest um, of Kingman. Bring. Centurion 28 Foxtrot, roger. VFR altitude at your discretion. 28 Fox, thank you. Afternoon, LA Center. Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu. Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu. Los Angeles Center, and are you looking for VFR flight following as well? You got it. We're about 10 northwest of Kingman right now, 8,000, climbing 9,500. Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu, squawk 1322 and ident. 1322 and ident to the Mike Zulu. 
going through especially the I haven't done the canyon Cal tour before the canyon route Center, Roger. The Las Vegas South Center, three, zero, zero, one. but just have somebody watching us and it shows in flight falling too it's not always just here to here he said listen I know you're going to Sedona but you're going to go via this uh, so he just made a note so future controllers will know that as well and we keep up flight falling people often think you can't get flight falling unless if you're going off route or what do I say if I want to do a river tour or a canyon tour or a bay tour or whatever uh, every you know, different geographic area has their fun little flights. Just tell them. You're certainly not the first to uh, ask for it, that's for sure. So what we said is, hey, I'm eventually going to Sedona via the special flight rules area. And he knew that meant the canyon. Again, autopilot's doing the fly on 8,400, climbing 9,500, about 300 feet per minute. I kind of lowered it. Density altitude's over 10,000 now. So again, remember, density altitude is where the airplane feels like it's at. So yes, I'm only at 8,400 feet, but density altitude's 10,150 feet. The airplane is performing and feels like it's already at 10,000 feet. So start to think about your service ceilings for your aircraft and realize your density altitude. You could, you could hit your aircraft's service ceiling for that day and density altitude long before you hit it with via MSL. And certainly out here way before AGL, that's for sure. Redstripe 762, contact LA Center 132.5. 132.5, Redstripe 762. Woo! Another good little updraft. Center, Flexjet 528, 29.2 to cross uh, Mison, two four. Flexjet 528, Los Angeles Center, Roger, good afternoon. Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu, contact LA Center 128.45. 128.45, thanks for your help, to the Mike Zulu. 128.45, LA Center again. Oh, it says a couple of Albuquerque Center. Afternoon Center, Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu, 8,800, climbing 9,500. Just caught the tail end of that. I'm over Kirky Center, Sun Speed 398, flight level 270. I'm going to have to I'm call him. So this brings up another interesting situation. We can barely hear him. He knows we checked it. He said something to us. I'm sure he just gave us an altimeter setting. But I'm going to get a little bit higher here, obviously, a little closer to him. And I'm going to call him again. That was a 2-3 Mike Zulu for 12485. 2485 for 23 Mike Zulu. Thank you for that. Look at that. I'll explain that in one it. second. 2485. Okay. Ten. Okay, so that was really cool. 2485. I'll, I'll pause here for a second. 242. Okay. He gave us uh, he gave us a frequency. Altitude. Called them up. We obviously couldn't hear them, so he asked another pilot to relay us the information. Um, hey, I really want you on this frequency. So we've got that. So super cool of uh, that nice lady uh, to call us and tell us that because she kind of worked as a repeater. We could just barely hear him uh, to get us on the right frequency. And now, now five, six, one, two, yeah, Lima, we can hear eight, him loud and clear. We'll properly check in. Thank a lot of cool stuff you learn in some remote areas where coverage isn't the best. Afternoon Center, Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu, 9,100, climbing 9,500. 
Skyhawk 2, 3 Mike Zulu, LA Center, Roger D. Kingman, Altimeter 3007. Zero 07, thank you, 2 3 Mike Zulu. Big change, it was 2 9 or 9 or 2 when we left. Much higher pressure, 3 zero, zero, 07. That almost put us at our altitude here. Great. Big change from 2 9 or 9 or 2 down in Bullhead City to 3007. But I like, I like flying and and the altimeter setting going up, right? High Top pressure, high Top pressure, Top good weather. Flying towards three. good weather right now, at least. In theory, that can, that can change quickly as well. Spear wings 470, contact LA Center 128.07. 2807, Spear wings 470, good day. Get about 90 across the ground, so nothing fantastic here. 90 miles per hour, about 80 knots across the ground, so nothing impressive or exciting about that. Gonna lean this thing out and save some fuel. Nice having the EI to get us nice and lean of peak. Holding altitude here, we're level. Jump one, one, checking in, 9,500. Jump one, one, LA Center, your radar contact, uh, Green Canyon Altimeter, 3024, report 5 minutes fire. 3024, we report 5, jump one, one. Navic here at 67, Las Vegas Altimeter, 3001. 3001, Navic here 67. LA Center, November 8th and 5th of the Bravo, climbing through 15000 for 19000. 8th and 5th of the Bravo, LA Center, climbing to 230. I continue climbing to 230, 8th and 5th of the Bravo. Center, good afternoon, jet speed 657, 15,400, climb into 190. Jet speed 657, LA Center, climb maintain follow 230. Climb now, maintain 230, 657.
LA American 1677, 14-5, climbing 190. American 1677, LA, Senate, climbing tape, followed 230. 230, American 1677. American 1677, contact LA Center, 128.07, have a nice I'm sorry, call sign. American 1677, LA Center, 128.07. 2807, American 1677, yeah. 2698, follow 300, PD, follow 240. 2698, LA Center, descend via the Tyson 5 Bravo, Las Vegas altimeters 3001. 3001, descend via the Tyson 5, that's 2698. So we're coming up on that Peach Springs VOR. I can actually see it out my window down here because it's in the middle of the desert. I'm going to go heading bug mode and start working us a little bit out towards the north here. And should start getting prettier and prettier scenery-wise here. We'll work us that way. I'm going to get Sedona plugged in here, too, just so we're ahead of the game. So I love the Avidyne having knobs to do this, as well as the touch screen, as well as the keyboard. When we're getting bumped around like this. It makes it super nice. We are 99.1 miles from Sedona. So we'll kind of follow this, follow the Grand Canyon all the way around, and then direct on into Sedona. Should be super fun. It's going to get bumpier and bumpier, though, too. Out of a 294, descending final 240. Showing a density altitude of 11,200 up here. I'm at 9,000. Riding these waves at 9,800. The autopilot's trying to hold 9,500. The Vegas altimeter is 3001. 30 out one and descending via the Tyson 5, Legion 47. LA, 9-22-89, with you out of 14-5, uh, follow up 190. 9 22 Mavic Air 67, contact Vegas approach 1 at 33.95, good day. 13395, Mavic Air 67, good day. So if you take a look at 4 flight, you can see we're just about to hop in that special flight rules area. And as you can see outside, it's starting to get real pretty. It's only going to get better and better. Uh, kind of the further north we go, especially uh, through this area here, through Separation Canyon, you can see out here Diamond Creek. United We're going to go right past Diamond, Diamond Creek, Center, which you'll see. We'll fly this as far north as we can, then we'll cut across. Uh, I believe that was 12807 United 22. Some more of these, uh, the Diamond Creek Come kind of sector day. here. And then proceed on out. And down to Sedona. We've got to be careful to watch it for the mountains in Sedona. We get some really nice sized peaks out there, 9,700 foot MSA out there, so we watch it for that as well. Go back and center us up. The ride's been fairly smooth up to this point, so we'll kind of see how it goes. Ground speed's uh, 85 knots, 99 miles per hour. 207, 300. Let the autopilot fly out on a heading bug mode right now. Negative. Uh, yeah, just we do. Uh, enjoying the view. Two zero seven. 
Vegas altimeter 3001. Tyson 3001, Allegiant 207. Allegiant 47, contact Vegas approach 125.6. Good day. See you later, 25.6, Allegiant 47. Thanks. American Triple Seven, contact LA Center, 128.07, good day. Uh, just verify it was 2807 for American Triple Seven, please. Affirmative, good day. Yeah. Leaving altitude. Catching a little updraft here. Wow. Crazy to think that erosion, this uh, river that going through this over how many thousands of years. Incredible. All right, just got my switch tanks alert. Again, verifying, a nice fuel burn. I can actually lean us out just a little more. Not much more. Green, green, green. Happy with the fuel burn, everything is set. Batteries charging, amps and volts. Great. Dummy check confirmed. Just that reminds me, we, we left that turned on. Normally that's for like a, a Cherokee aircraft, you're flying out of switch tanks left and right every 30 minutes. You should do the same thing that switch tanks, check everything, but I left switch tanks on there, even though we always fly on both, just to always have that redundancy of always double checking, especially out here. Like, let's, let's think about it. If something happens, if we lose an engine out here, where are we going? It is some serious, rugged terrain out here. There are not many options. You're going to a flat plateau. I mean, there's the riverbed there, but is it dry right now? Or could there be a flash flood um, as well? You don't know. There's a dirt road. There's nothing straight about the riverbed or straight about the dirt road, though. It's, it's some tough, rugged, rugged terrain out here. You would um, think you're going for a plateau, but you're going to you're gonna bend up the airplane real good. You'll probably... Leaving altitude. You'll, you'll be okay, but you're going to bend up the airplane real good, and then it's a matter of someone then coming to get you. So you need to make sure you broadcast. That's why I'm so thrilled we're on flight following now for doing this, even though, as you can see on the charts, we're, we're quite a ways out from Vegas and everything else. Um, you know, we're north of Prescott, Vegas. We're kind of close to the middle of nowhere, in a way. So just watching that here. I'm going to start turning us a little bit to the north, kind of follow this route here. we we'll get some really pretty terrain underneath us. I fly this way just a hair longer. It is gorgeous, though. But yeah, to that engine failure point, it is, um, it's going to be a rough landing. Uh, my best bet would be to go, uh, you're just looking for the flattest, Altitude. the flattest spot you can really go here. Dynon's yelling at me because we're catching these updrafts and downdrafts. The autopilot's holding it and then riding it back down. Yeah, you're looking for the flattest spot. And even then, there's, there's... You know, having been to the Grand Canyon before and never done any hiking out here, but just seen it up close, um, there's a, some of this brush down here is big. It doesn't look big from here, but there's cactuses. There's a lot of things that are going to make it very, very difficult. We always fly. We have our survival kit. It's right back here, actually behind and under my seat. It's in a yellow Pelican case. I actually need to do a video about it just to kind of show everybody so you can see. It's a yellow Pelican case. It floats, has the spot locator beacon on it. Um, as me, well, we're going to continue kind of to the north a little bit here, then to the east for maybe another 20 minutes to that Diamond Creek sector, and then direct Sedona, if that's okay. Okay, were you planning on going through the corridor at all? Any of the corridors? No, I think we're going to stay out of most of that. We're going to just kind of stay in this Diamond Creek area here, due east in a second, and then to Sedona. Okay. All right. 
another nice thing about them uh, watching us and keeping an eye on us um, as well, especially first time through the special flight rules area. She asked if we're doing the, any of the corridors, and I'm kind of happy uh, staying up here where we are at um, as well. So, but yes, I was I was mentioning about the survival kit, we have the full survival kit with the spot beacon. We have all that. We have ADSB times three in this airplane um, as well. And squawk our 7700. We're talking to LA Center. Can make that broadcast. They can drop a pin on us, but you're still going to have to survive for quite a few hours uh, until somebody gets out here with a helicopter uh, to save you. If they can get out here with a helicopter to save you, that's the altitude right now where we're at is 11,000 feet, almost exactly. They're bringing a. They're going to need to bring a jet ranger or an R66 or something turbine out here to get you. And even even some of those turbine powered helicopters, they still they're not they're not immune to density altitude. Uh, they may have to wait until uh, the sun sets a little bit. Uh, just flight job. And we're having. That's the first report I've had. I don't think we've had too many reports. I believe it's mostly smooth, but uh, yeah, up to two three zero. All right, thanks. Flight level two three zero south four nine six. That's a twenty one fifty here. Yeah, even those those rescue helicopters aren't immune that are turbine aren't immune to density altitude still. Still a very real factor. Take us to the north here a little bit now. LA Delta twenty one fifty wow. is with you two eight two descending two four zero. Delta twenty one fifty LA descending yeah, pretty good view out that, uh, Vegas, uh, outside. Descend via the Tyson five arrival, Delta twenty one fifty. Papa forty nine sixty eight, contact LA Center, one two eight point zero seven today. Allegiant 207, contact Vegas approach 125.6, good day. 25.6, good day, Allegiant 207. Telephone call up, 227 honey crime 10,000. Contact about uh, three miles southwest of Grand Canyon, altitude indicates 8,300. Come and maintain 16,000, the Grand Canyon altimeter is 3024. 16,000, 3024, cloud 277. Advocate 86, contact Vegas approach 1 to 33.95. Good night. Base approach 33.95. Good day. Cloud 27, can we get the direct 29? Hector, sorry. 27, put our Hector. Direct Hector, Cloud 27. Absolutely gorgeous. It's crazy to see such an elevation drop out that way. I look out to my my right side, and it's just got some trees, and I'm probably about 2,000 feet AGL from uh, from this on my right side out here, and then <laughs> probably 8,000 AGL from the left. Just crazy to be out here and seeing some trees grow way, way up here too. That brush. LA flagship 404, uh, 290 descending 240. Flagship 404 LA descend via the Tyson 5 arrival. The Vegas altimeter is 3001. 3001 via the Tyson 5, flagship awesome. 404. As we change sectors, I'm going to change. I'm still, we're still in the LA center, but I don't want to be that complacent. On two, I'm also going to just monitor, continue to monitor kind of this area's traffic, that Diamond Creek sector's traffic as well. It's fantastic. LA Center's watching us. It's fantastic. I have ADSB uh, from from 
different independent sources to watch for traffic, but it still doesn't beat looking outside, hearing it from flight following, hearing it from the other pilots calling it out, and seeing it for ADSB. Maybe it's redundant, maybe I'm like a, a, a super nerd, but uh, I, I would rather be safe. Yes, 2150, contact out. Can Vegas approach one, two, five, rather be point, safe, six, so. We got all sorts of traffic on the track. Good day, Delta 2150. Just be as smart as we can about it. Message. Looks good. And you can see on the iPad, we're kind of cutting that course in a little close here. Twin Peaks is a little bit out that way. I can just barely see it, but it's all. It really doesn't matter where you go out here, it is just gorgeous to see. Center Spear Wings 919, descending 285 for 240. Center 919 LA, descend via the Tyson 5 arrival, the Vegas altimeter is 3001. Descend via the Tyson 5 arrival, Spear Wings 919. I'm just going to head a little bit more to the north, and I think I'll cut this east turn a little bit early. But I need to be very careful with when I time my turn back to Sedona. So I want to see, I have a 9,700 foot, what we'll call MSA out here, minimum safe altitude out here. It's because of this right here, White Horse Lake, uh, and then this Bill Williams Mountain right here. So I got to be careful of that. I do have a, a nice airport. I could land there, super high elevation, 6,600. But I'm feeling pretty comfortable to come across Interstate 40 there. Keep this Bill Wilson Williams Mountain off my right side. This, another big one here. Sit Greaves, I think is how you say that mountain. Kind of go in between those as a pass. Grand Canyon, through the Sycamore Canyon as well. You'll be able to see that and into Sedona, whoo, big updraft, which sits at 4,800 feet. I've been to Sedona before. I've only approached it from the south and the south uh, west before. So this will be a new approach for me coming on in. I know it's gonna be rocking wind-wise in there with all those big peaks, but it should make for a really fun approach. So like I guess I'm gonna fly this just a little bit longer. I, I kind of like that idea. I can even cut it earlier. I just want to make sure, even if I, if I cut it, say, earlier, let's see what that looks like. If I draw that line back this way, maybe from the end of this canyon here instead. That puts me, that still puts me pretty decent, and I could, and actually I could take that, go to direct Clark Memorial, have that in there, and use that to kind of thread the needle, and I can always deviate a few degrees to my left, meaning north. Uh, to cut through that pass, so feel a little bit better getting into Sedona. So we'll keep an eye on that as well, but that's something else we need to time out pretty good as well. But just enjoying the view for now. It is gorgeous. Second five one, did you want to maintain via fire flight following? Looks like a really cool canyon up here. I mean, once we hit that, we'll start that turn okay, out. Okay, five one, stand by. It should be pretty cool. Viking 5-1, you don't want to maintain, I just want to clarify, you don't want to maintain BFR flight following, but you want to keep your flight plan open, correct? Viking 5 one, Roger, in order to keep your flight plan open, we have to keep this track. If we drop you, uh, if we can't see you all together, then we won't have your flight plan anymore. Um, but for now, IFR cancellation is received and maintain your present code for VFR flight following. Just stay on this code and stay with us. Viking 5 1 Roger, uh, stand by for the switch.
Switch at 404, contact Vegas approach at 125.6. 256, Switch at 404, you have your day. Viking 5-1, are you doing pattern work with Grand Canyon Tower? Is that what you want to do? Yeah, I'll switch you over to Canyon cool. Tower for the, for the overhead, but after that, come back on my, so my frequency. Give you a Grand Canyon a left turn here to see that view, because that's gorgeous. And then we'll head out to the east. I'm uh, still coordinating with them. Viking 5-1, radar service terminate, contact Green Canyon Tower. Viking 5-1, radar service terminate, contact Green Canyon Tower. Spirit 919, contact Vegas Approach, 125.6. 25-6, Spirit 919, see you. Caution. All right, we're going to continue out to the east, just a little bit longer, another few minutes, and then I'm going to start that turn kind of inbound to Sedona. So again, we're cutting this flight up a little bit. That's why you kind of see us jumping and everything else. And there's not going to be much through kind of this stretch here, so I'm sure we'll we'll cut up a lot of that there, uh, and I'll kind of start uh, inbound to S uh, Sedona here in just a bit. We'll probably pick it, pick it up once we start getting back to some cool terrain. So we'll catch you guys out over there. South 3235, maintain 5230. Maintain 230, South 3235. All right, so we just to catch you up on where we're at now, we've passed that Clark Memorial. I'll show you here. Pass, past that Clark Memorial. We're heading up into the Sycamore Canyon Wilderness Area, you can see here. We are 17 miles from Sedona. I haven't been able to get the ATIS, but it looks like it's transmitting now, or the a AWOS. Let's see if we can grab it here together. Altimeter 3008, remark. Density altitude 7,300. Yeah, I believe it. Be advised, copies on runway 21, unusable beyond two nautical miles. Sedona Airport. Automated weather observation. Two, zero, five, five, zero, weather, wind, one, nine, zero, at seven, wind, variable, between, one, five, zero, and two, one, zero, visibility, one, zero, clear, low, one, two, thousand, temperature, two, niner, Celsius, dew point, minus five, altimeter, three, zero, zero, eight, remark. Density altitude, 7,300. I want to hear those winds. Just one more time, because you said they were variable between 150 and 
I think 210. That's a big uh, 60 degree window. Sedona Airport. Automated weather observation. 2056 Zulu. Weather. Wind. 200 at 7. Wind. Variable between 150 and 230. Okay. That's a big old window. Let's see. Let me just confirm. I believe that's 2 1. Are my runways there? Yeah, so we'll, three, two, November Victor, so we'll come in runway 21, 5,000 feet of runway, which is on my left. Point four five, thank you. Perfect. I've got, I'm talking to Phoenix Approach. I've got Sedona Unicom. It's a pilot-controlled airport. Coming up. November 23, Mike Zulu. The traffic's about three miles ahead of you. Uh, still indicating 9,300. Looks like he's about 40 knots faster than you should be. No factor. Thank you, 23 Mike Zulu. We have him on ADSB as well. All right, watching for that traffic. I can't really, not too hazy out here, but couldn't see that traffic. Tough to spot traffic you're following as well. And he's about 40 knots faster than us, so not a problem. But this, we're coming up on here. It's in the Sycamore Canyon Wilderness area. And I've got Sedona in sight. I'll start my descent in just a little bit. I'm at, riding this updraft. I was at 9.5, now I'm up at 10. Now it's, I'm catching another downdraft here. Autopilot's doing a great job handling it. Just kind of riding those waves. In mountain flying, we focus more on just attitude flying rather than sticking to that altitude. And controllers out here really know and appreciate and understand that um, as well for the most part. So as we get a little closer here, let me just click on Sedona to make sure there's no other little issues with uh, right patterns or anything like that. We'll be landing at 2-1. I'll have to overfly the field back for that, make a left down one, assuming there's uh, nothing else. We look at the AFD page for it. All right, they don't say anything about it for runway 2-1. 2-1, medium intensity runway lights, bird and wildlife, turbulence may be experienced in the vicinity of the airport when landing runway 2-1 with strong southwest wind conditions. Well, got two of those, two of the, two, or, uh, two of the three things they mentioned there. Let's see, no touching of landings, got all that, a little bit of an uphill slope. All right. We're just ready for that. So it's been a while since I've been to Sedona. This is 2 3 Mike Zulu. Additional traffic gets here 11 o'clock, 5 miles southbound. Altitude indicates 7,300. He may be in the pattern there at Sedona. I've got him in sight. It does look like he's in the pattern there. Are you okay if we slowly start down for Sedona? 2 3 Mike Zulu, that's still to observe traffic for you. Radar service terminated. Just send a pilot's discretion. Squawk VFR for his exchange crew. We'll see you next time. We'll see you on the way out. Thanks, 2 3 Mike Zulu. All right, well, he dropped us. So we're doing. Let's head on down. Start a nice slow descent on down. I've got Sedona in sight out there. Left traffic 2-1. He dropped us over to Sedona Unicom. Ten miles out to the northwest. We'll make a call. Sedona traffic. Skyhawk 2-3. Mike Zulu. Ten miles to the northwest. Inbound for landing. Sedona. The one that just took off 2-1, maybe did a go-around on 2-1, it's kind of hard to tell. Sedona 7, station at 5 Public Office, two and a half miles to the north, NRA 45, left down, one runway 3, full stop Sedona. Runway 3, he just said, huh. Okay. We'll check that out when I get there. I'm going to hand fly this thing real quick. Just to bring it on in, nice and easy. Let's we'll keep listening to what's happening out there. We can always just circle the field and take a look at that windsock to see what it's doing. Always smart. But Sedona's about the only little green patch out there. I am doing everything I can. Station Air 525 on golf. Left down, wind, runway 3, Sedona. Sedona. 
Okay, Vanks 4 6, about five miles southwest of the field now. Uh, Going to be entering a five mile straight in final for runway three. Sedona. Everyone seems to be using three here. Sounds like winds are favoring three at Sedona. Winds are about calm in Sedona. Thank you. Two, three, Mike. So we're eight miles out to the northwest. We'll just enter a 45 to left downwind for three at Sedona. Thank you. Although, ASAW says one thing. Two pilots on the ground say they're basically calm. So I'll believe it when I see it as I catch up. 200 foot per minute updraft up with my RPM back at almost 1800. And I'm climbing somehow, pushing the nose forward as you can see. Still catching these updrafts. Wigwag lights coming on. And Sedona has traffic station at 55 on golf turn final on way three, full stop Sedona. Sedona traffic air ranks four six, turning about a five mile final for runway three, Sedona. works better with my departure out uh, to fly kind of runway three on out through this little area here. I've got the valley here to circle if I need to climb. Hey, whoo -hoo. There's 1,500 feet, 1,700 feet, 1,800 feet per minute down, 1,900, 2,000, maxed out, 2,000 feet per minute down, up in the airs. That's flying in Sedona for sure. Really, any mountain flying. That can happen. They keep coming on down here. A hard time descending, as crazy as that sounds. So on traffic, Skyhawk 2-3, Mike Zulu's now four miles out to the northwest on a 45 to left downwind for three at Sedona. Sedona traffic station on 525 on golf, clear runway three, Sedona. Sedona traffic, caravan 4-6 on a three mile final for runway three, Sedona. Caravan on a three mile final for three. Don't have it in sight yet. Of course, three miles. Sedona traffic, Mooney 871 Alpha Mike at the FBO, taxi runway 21 via Alpha, Sedona. Now he's taxing out 2 1. Here below 1 2. Catch the winds next lap on that ATIS. Hey, boss, sorry. The tough part about Sedona is the town, is it's up on a mesa, it's up on a plateau, so the town is much lower than the airport, so there's a lot of psychological factors. My pattern should be around six, little, about 6,000 feet safe. And Sedona traffic, Skyhawk 2-3, Mike Zulu's turning left downwind, runway three, Sedona. Sedona traffic, Air Vanks 4-6, short final, runway three. Oh, I got him in sight. Carburetor heat's on, speed's looking good. A little more altitude to lose. Approaching altitude. Thank you. I set that for pattern altitude. There, aren't kidding, the windsock doesn't look too terribly bad, actually. We're kind of protecting this valley. I see that Mooney tacks in out. He's gonna use two one, two or three others before me use three. The windsock does look pretty calm. Zero at four, visibility, one, zero. I said that. All right, beat my touchdown point, car beat power back. I'm just going to go 10 degrees of flaps and let this ASOS Minus run five, through. Minus 5, altimeter, 3, zero, zero, 8, remarks. Density altitude, 7,200. Be advised, copies on runway 21, unusable beyond 2 nautical miles. I'm going to keep just about 10 degrees of flaps in here. Sedona traffic, air vanks 46 is clear at Sedona out Sedona Airport. To the ramp. Automated weather observation. 2 1 0 6 Zulu weather. Wind 2 6 0 at 3. Visibility. Uh, 2 6 0 at 3. Maybe they're not kidding. That's, it's only at 3. 
not too terribly bad. Soon area traffic, Skyhawk 23, Mike Zulu's turning left base, runway 3, Sedona. They're only at three knots, they're basically calm, so those guys were probably right on base. Gotta keep this thing coming down, this is the hard thing. Sometimes it's hard to lose altitude, sometimes it's hard to get it back out here. Um, I want to come in a little bit faster here. I'm going to go 20 degrees of flaps now, I believe. I'm probably going to land there. Whew! Get all blown around. Jeez. And so traffic 2-3, Mike Zulu's turn final, runway 3, full stop, Sedona. Just sneak that radio call in so I can focus on this approach and landing. Now I'm catching little updrafts that are not helping my descent rate any. There we go. Now we're coming. ahead. Pull up. I Terrain hear you. Pull up. I hear you, Avidine. Always looking out for us. Traffic. A little bit of a slip into that nominal wind. Actually, go another notch. The flaps here, a little high, a little fast. But you'll realize that with density altitude, it's a little harder to get down. Something we as Florida pilots forget from time to time. Looking good. I get a little drop over this ridge, as just as predicted. Look at that, 900 feet per minute. This is predicted, went from too high to right on glide path, to left of center, to right of center. And aiming for like those thousand foot marks, letting her float on in. Holding it off, holding it off. 4,000 feet of runway remaining, right at those thousand foot marks. And yeah, they weren't kidding, that wind's pretty darn calm. Let this thing roll on out, save some brakes. And over to the FBO. Pretty cool approach into Sedona. Really, Grand Canyon first, then an approach into Sedona. I hope you really love this whole process. I know this is longer than a normal M0A.com video. And so in traffic, Skyhawk 2-3, Mike Zulu's taxiing clear of 3 at Alpha 4 to the FBO Sedona. But I hope you really enjoyed it. Can't wait to read your comments below this video on uh, YouTube, on Facebook. Listen, if you want to see more about our online ground school as well, which I've mentioned previously, there's a link uh, for a trial in the description of this video as well to check it all out. But listen, enjoy the rest of your day. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. We'll see ya. And so, 2-3 Mike 2 is clear all runways.